Do you want your Blender projects to look this cinematic? Well, here are some great tips on how to achieve this look. Now, my first tip is blur. Frames per second, motion blur, and shutter speed are all connected. I would not recommend anything higher or lower than 24 FPS for a cinematic look. In general, 24 FPS just looks more cinematic. We are accustomed to seeing 24 FPS in cinema, the motion just looks slightly more natural, and the motion blur just looks way less artificial than 60 FPS, which tends to look a little bit like a video game cutscene. Now there's a lot of proper reasoning for this, but I'll leave it to the experts to explain that. And so I'd highly recommend this video by William Forcher on how to make Unreal Engine look more cinematic because he goes a lot more into depth with an explanation of this, and the video applies to Blender in a lot of ways as well. I watched his video just before making the short film and I think that it helped a huge amount in the aesthetic department. In general, a good rule of thumb is to have your shutter speed set to double your frame rate. In this project, I have my shutter speed set to 0.5, which I believe will equate to double my frame rate or 1 48th of a second, because 2 times 24 is 48. This has a huge impact on motion blur. If you set your shutter speed number lower, you will get clearer, more crisp frames with not as much blur, but if you set it higher, you'll get more blur. But if you have any kind of movement in your scene, it will look way more natural to have a middle of the ground shutter speed. Because you may or may not know this, but there is a lot of blur in both real life and in movies. Obviously rules do exist to be broken, but in general, your shutter speed should be about double your frame rate. And again, if you want to know more specific details, other people know a lot more than me and go into a lot more depth than me about these things. Lastly, and I believe most importantly for this piece, is depth of field. I want you to have a look at this shot that I have open in my viewport right now. It's framed pretty nicely. However, while it's framed nicely, the focus is absolutely everywhere. We can see full detail on stuff in the background except for the mist which slightly blurs it out and we can see all of the low resolution parts of the texture on this guy's arm and even on this guy's gun as well where there's a bunch of grunge. Zoomed out, it isn't too noticeable, it's alright, but this looks like a video game cutscene or a screenshot from a video game which has been framed artistically but lacks some cinematic punch. Now we turn on depth of field. Suddenly all of these artifacts are just gone. Everything outside of focus is completely blurred out in a very very nice and aesthetically pleasing way. It's super soft. Even parts of the gun are blurred out. Now this is very intense depth of the field, but I believe that it works well with the intensity of this scene. The tip of the gun barrel is in focus, and zooming in all the way we can still see some artifacts. However, it looks way more natural than it did before, and honestly I can barely tell, especially when zoomed out, this just looks nice, and that is about it. Here I've got my f-stop set at 3, which is quite a wide aperture, which leads to a lot of depth of field as you can see. However, this is perfectly achievable with a real camera. My camera can go down to 3 f-stops as well and achieve a similar look in real life. Overall, depth of field is just magical when it comes to these kinds of scenes, especially in extreme close-ups. Even in wider shots, it does do a lot of heavy lifting. The difference is much more subtle in wider shots. As you can see, with depth of field, we do get much more emphasis on our foreground and much less on our background, and the scene bleeds together quite nicely and realistically. Whereas when we turn it off, we get a lot more visual noise in the image. Everything looks crisp and detailed, but there's no separation and level of detail between the foreground and the background, and everything looks quite sharp and in focus, which just makes the whole scene feel a little bit more cluttered. Depth of field is a great tool for drawing your audience's eye to what you want them to see. I have quite a unique setup here. I have this empty object over here, which when I drag around, focuses the depth of field. You can see if I drag it down to the ground here, suddenly this part of the ground is very in focus, and now all of the stuff up here, including the clone troopers, aren't so much, and you might also notice that the camera is tracking this object. I have set up a track to constraint on my camera over here, and I've told it to track to this empty object, the focal point. This may not always be what you want, sometimes you want to focus on something over here while keeping the camera framing the same, but in general, most of the time you want the thing you're focusing on to be center frame, so this worked quite well for me and helped me speed up my process a lot. I came up with this camera rig idea myself after watching a few different videos and combining a few concepts, and I found this increased my workflow of setting up camera angles and nice shots a lot. I'd highly recommend it. If you need a more in-depth tutorial on how to set this up, I'm happy to make one. The next thing which helped me the most in achieving a cinematic look is definitely Blender's compositor. Now this may look a bit overwhelming, but I promise you it's not way too complicated. This is what my scene looks like without any compositing done on it whatsoever. It already looks pretty decent in my opinion. This is what it looks like with compositing. It just brings it to another level. Everything looks way more well integrated and the whole thing just looks a lot more cinematic. 
Firstly, this glare node does a lot of heavy lifting. By using this, we can add bloom to our scene. You can see without it, everything looks a little bit too sharp and not very hazy at all, which might be the look that you're going for in certain situations. But in general, everything looks a little bit better with some glare. I might have gone a bit over the top with this one, but at Star Wars, everything's quite bright and I just wanted something quite intense. Next, we have a subtle lens distortion node. The values for this are very small because we don't want to completely destroy and distort the entire scene. You can see if I zoom in on the edge of the screen, everything is blurred out and brings the focus towards the center. However, everything looks very undistorted and clear, whereas you get a little bit of distortion in real life on a real camera. By adding in this node, we get some slight distortion where the image curves ever so slightly, and we also get chromatic aberration where we get some color bleed on the edges of the screen, just like we would get in real life. This is meant to be very, very subtle, so I wouldn't recommend turning this up very high unless you're doing something incredibly arty, because it's quite distracting otherwise. But yeah, it's a nice node. Next we have the subtle bokeh blur, which just helps to smooth out all of the really, really sharp edges that you get in a 3D image. We have this on a super, super subtle low setting because we do not want to blur out all of the fine detail in our render, but we do just want to smooth out those edges and some of that noise a little bit. A very impactful note that we have here is the mist pass. Essentially this just adds a fog layer in the background without the performance cost of volumetrics. You can see without it, everything in the background remains blurred but still fairly clear. Whereas when we add back in the mist pass, everything gets a bit of haze on top of the blur, which looks a bit more realistic and also brings your focus even more to the subject at hand. Next we very subtly mix in this built-in film grain texture that comes with Blender with the rest of the scene. You can see the factor is very low because we don't want to add a huge amount of noise to our scene but adding proper film grain looks a lot better than Blender's default noise and so I do like to mix a little bit of that in as well. Lastly, we can use this to change our colour balance. I bought out some more blues in mine because otherwise everything's a bit too orange. You can see we don't want something like this because it's too intense and looks a little bit homogenous. Whereas if I bring it back to bring out some more blues, everything just looks a little bit more cinematic and realistic. And that is about it for the compositor. Next, I have a really key tip which I didn't learn about for ages when I was starting to use Blender, and that is your camera's focal length. In very simple terms, you can think of this like your camera's zoom. I stuck to using Blender's default focal length of 50mm, which you can see here, which is quite normal and looks alright. After watching some tutorials, doing some research and experimenting by myself, I settled on an 85mm focal length for this project, which is quite standard in cinema. The results were immediate, everything looks way more cinematic. You can see here a few examples of what this does. The background almost gets compressed behind the subject in a way. The depth of field is also accentuated, everything looks more focused and the shot just looks tighter. Everybody, go with a higher focal length, it just looks so good. I have experimented and made some nice looking renders with a 35 or 24mm focal length, but you have to be intentional and purposeful with this stuff. And in my experience, 85mm is a great go-to focal length for all of your projects. But I certainly encourage you to mess around and try a bunch of different focal lengths to see what you like. Now my final huge tip for achieving a cinematic look in Blender would definitely be lighting. This is both achieved from the lighting of your sky and your environment, and also from manual point lights that you place around. Now I actually explained all of this in a video that I uploaded just last week, so I will link that for you right here. I hope this video was useful for you guys, please let me know if you have any ideas or feedback, and hope you are excited for the upload of this short animation as well. I'm Yeeson, and I'll see you in the next one.